you from Baylor University to have this special time together with this live event about preparing champions for life. I'm a 1996 graduate from Baylor, a proud bear. I'm on the Baylor Alumni Board of Advocates and the Baylor Area Regional Council that works with engagement across America. And I work and volunteer specifically in the Atlanta market. I know many of you bears joining us today would be probably really excited to join us in volunteering to help the Baylor alumni across the nation. If you have interest in volunteering for your alma mater, please email the Baylor alumni office. This email will be really easy to memorize. It's Baylor alumni at baylor.edu. I would like to also share that today we have just a few housekeeping items to go over. And that would be that we are recording this live event. And secondly, if you have a question that you would like answered by Nick Florence or Marcus Sedberry, we do have a question and answer session toward the end. And if you look on your uh, computer or your smartphone, you'll see a Q&A section and you can enter in your question at any time. And time permitting, we will get to as many of those questions as possible. When I think about preparing champions for life, I think back all the way to one of our formal, former amazing presidents, Samuel Palmer Brooks. He was our president at Baylor back from 1902 to 1930. So he was a president for a very long time. And I found such an interesting, heartwarming fact is that he is actually from Georgia. So we know we have a great tie between Georgia and Baylor. And he is from Milledgeville, which is an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. So in this time that we're thinking about preparing champions for life, we're looking back to even how that was his heart when he was asked by the senior class to address them before um, at the graduation ceremony, he was very ill. And so he was not able to make it from what I hear, but he wrote a speech, not just for that senior class, but for all graduating classes to come. And such an interesting quote I wanna share with you. He said, build upon the foundations here, the great school of which I have dreamed, so that she may touch and mold the lives of future generations and help to fit them for life here and the hereafter. Preparing champions for life is not just preparing somebody to graduate, but we are preparing these student athletes for success in their life and to have a great hereafter. What I would like to do is share one more interesting fact. From Georgia, we have over 4,000 Baylor alumni in the Georgia area, and we have 160 students from Georgia at Baylor presently. So we have a great connection between Georgia and Baylor University, and we wanna to continue to support Baylor alumni throughout the nation. So please consider engaging and volunteering with us. I would like to introduce our moderator today, Nick Florence. Nick is the Associate Athletics Director for Major Gifts, and he oversees capital projects and leadership gifts. He is a graduate from Baylor University in 2011. He graduated with a business degree in economics. In 2013, he obtained his master's of business um, is MBA here at Baylor. He's a Dallas, Texas native, and to his credit, he has helped raise uh, significant funds for the Baylor athletic program, including the Billy W. Williams Golf Practice Facility and Clubhouse at 6.3 million. You know we love to fit our Baylor Bears with the best, and Nick Florence has helped raise the funds that we can offer these great assets to our Bears. He's helped raise money for the Simpson Center weight room renovations at $2 million plus. He's also 
very well credited on the football field. He is a former Baylor Bear football player, all American quarterback for the Bears. Florence set Baylor's single game and single season passing yards records. He was named Big 12 Scholar Athlete of the Year. And when he capped his career with a win over number 17 UCLA in the 2012 Holiday Bowl. I would like that we now welcome Nick Florence, our moderator. He's worked with Baylor in, uh, since 2013, and he is an amazing man, and we are so glad to welcome Nick Florence. Adrian, thank you so much. Um, I hope I can live up to that introduction today. <laughs> uh, that was flattering. Um, thank you all for being here today. It, it is a privilege uh, to be involved here at Baylor University and specifically with Baylor Athletics. Um, as Adrian mentioned, I played football here and just uh, it is a dream. I tell people I am living the dream here in Waco, Texas, staying involved and making a difference. And, and you know, part of that dream uh, does not happen without amazing people that I get to work alongside with. And, and today we get the chance to, to have a conversation with Marcus Sedbury. And Marcus uh, came to Baylor Athletics in May of 2017. Uh, he is our senior associate AD for student athlete success. And outside of, of Mac Rhodes uh, leading the charge here in Baylor Athletics, I think Marcus plays such a pivotal role in the success that we are having with our student athletes um, on the field and off the field. Uh, the, the intangibles, the creativeness, the strategy uh, that Marcus brings to our team is unmatched. Um, he came to us uh, from the University of Arkansas, uh, spent a couple of stints there actually, was with the Philadelphia Eagles uh, for a couple of years in player development, uh, but uh, is a graduate of the University of Nebraska, uh, ran track and field there, so he's a student athlete himself and understands the, the stress and demands that a student athlete has and, and is under during their college education days, and so it is a privilege uh, to have Marcus uh, with us today, and we are just overjoyed at what he brings to the team and, and, the, and the impact he is making. So welcome, Marcus. Thank you, Nick. I, uh, I need to go back to college to see if I can get a few accolades to keep up with you, man. Like, uh, <laughs> I get to work alongside you every day, and you don't talk about all the, all the stuff you did on the field. I mean, I, I read some headlines, but I got I to gotta step my game up. But I'm, I'm excited to be here with you uh, as a dear friend. And uh, it's a joy and honor to work alongside you to serve our students. Appreciate it, Marcus. And, and I think we know who would still run in a, in a foot race, and, and that would go hands down to you. So you're still, <laughs> still more of an athlete than I ever was. So, oh, man. Um, but Marcus, as we jump in, and, and everyone, please feel free to, to chime in the Q&A during the event. I'll have it up and, and can monitor it. So as we share things, if there's a question that comes to mind, we'll do our best to answer as well. Uh, but Marcus, I think one of the most unique things um, uh, about what we do really comes from who you are. Uh, and I know this event is, is not about you. Um, you know, we have we, here in athletics, we have a phrase on our desk that it's amazing what we can accomplish when we don't mind who gets the credit. And I think you embody that uh, so well and live that out. But for you getting to this position in your career and wanting to have an impact in the lives of student athletes, I think a lot of that from our conversations and getting to know you has been born from within in your experience as a student athlete. If you don't mind, take us into, into your story a little bit and, and how you came to have this passion and desire to impact others. Yeah, absolutely. Nick, you're right. I don't like to make it about me, but uh, I don't mind sharing my story. Cause I, you're, I think it really does speak to who I am as a person and, you know, my, my journey started, I mean, I'm a son of a, a coach. I've always been around athletics. I've always understood the power of sport, uh, played football, ran track, played basketball. I did all those things in high school, went on to Nebraska, as you mentioned. And while at Nebraska, I actually ended up having a career ending injury. Ended up having four stress fractures in my lower back. And, and uh, I tried for, for years to push through it and just never really, um, got to the level that I aspire to. Once I had dreams of competing in the Olympics. I actually had a dream of being one of the first athletes to compete in the Olympics and play in the NFL. I don't think you knew that, Nick. 
Those are my, I, I, that's news to me. I like that. News to I me. like the high aspirations. That was it. I wanted to be one of the first to ever do it. And uh, just my body and truly the Lord it had a different plan for me. And, and it actually took some people in the department in Nebraska to help me realize I had much more to offer the world than just my athletic ability. My parents would tell me, um, maybe some friends would say it every now and then, but for somebody in the, in the department to just see me as a person, see what I could contribute to this world, to this life beyond how fast I could run, um, that, that stood out to me. And that opened up doors for me that truly have paved the way for me to get here. It, it, it introduced me to this, this side of athletics. I knew coaching, I knew the athletic, you know, the actual athlete side of it, but I didn't know about the administration piece. And so because his name is Keith Zimmer, because Keith poured into me in that way, it really lit a fire in me to be able to pour myself into the lives of others. So I, I, I'm certain that God has put me on this earth to push and pull people to be the best that they can be. And so I wake up every day with that in mind. I wake up trying to figure out how I can be a vessel in the lives of others so that God can get the, the, the glory from my perspective, but then also be magnified in what they do um, in their work. And so I try to pour that into our student athletes, our staff, truly anybody I come in contact with. No, Marcus, I think that's huge what you mentioned in, in learning that you are more than an athlete and, and you had to experience that firsthand at Nebraska. And I think what makes Baylor so special and what your area does and, and the phrase that Adrian talked about from the very beginning and what's on the headline of this event of preparing champions for life that our student athletes, there's so much more to who they are than what's, uh, what's shown on the, on the field of play that what's behind the number on their Jersey, uh, you know, what lies uh, underneath the helmet and inside their own hearts. And so I think that's what makes us special is that we are truly about preparing these young men and women to be successful in life, that, that yes. sports is such a small fraction of who they are. But for us as fans, that's how we know them. And that's how, that's how they're known publicly uh, for the most part. Yeah. And so preparing champions for life, Mac, somehow compelled you to be a part of that uh, and, and stole you away from Arkansas. How has that vision become a reality for you and overseeing our student athletes center for excellence and what we do with our student athletes on and off the field? Yeah, Nick, it's so true. Uh, you, you can truthfully go anywhere in the country and people will talk about wanting to, to uh, make sure that their student athletes have the best experience possible while they're at, at the particular college and want to prepare them for life after. What drew me to Baylor was the vision of Mac to actually back it up, to, to truly put your, your money, your efforts, your time where your mouth is and, and to live it out and to do it in a way that's unique to Baylor and that we can do it under, this, under the Christian mission. There, there aren't any other places in the country that I feel like you can do that. And so that, while I was in a great position at Arkansas, I just saw that the, the possibilities at Baylor to tap into all aspects of the student athlete, they were limitless. And to have an AD who would say, hey, let's go for it. Let's, let's go to the max. Let's do it better than anybody can even dream about doing it. And I want you to help us help us do that. That was, it truly was inspiring to me and it continues to inspire me um, every day. And, and so we had this challenge of actually doing it, like truly be the hands and feet of, um, of preparing champions for life. And, uh, and, and so it's been, it's been quite the journey right, in terms of the process of, of doing it, um, but it's one that I take great pride in and, and one that I know that a lot of our student athletes have come, they've gone through our program at this point because we're three, four years in, and they can come back and talk to us about the impact our preparing champions for life and our Baylor Go program has had on, on their life and on their profession. No, that's, that's tremendous. So uh, you're really a part of this character formation pillar in athletics. So Mac has this preparing champions for life and four pillars of, uh, of athletic success, academic achievement, uh, character formation, spiritual growth. And really you hit 
I would say you hit all four, um, you know, as, as a person and individual, when we are well-rounded in all areas of our life, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, we are, we perform at our best in all those areas, Absolutely. but you really dive in your area of, dives into the academic achievement, this, the character formation, the spiritual growth piece. So before we jump into what Baylor built is and how it yeah. impacts those areas, to me, athletics is is driven by success on the field uh, we know in in our industry if you don't succeed on the field you're not going to have a job for very long um, and as a as a coach um, and getting players and student athletes to get involved from a time standpoint and their time is limited as it is I would assume coaches have got to be behind what we're doing off the field yeah and I think we have the best coaches in America so yeah. talk to me a little bit about that process was it hard to get coaches involved in this Baylor built programming um, and then we'll dive into into what that really looks like yeah so the, so the process of even launching it um, was pretty extensive we, we went through a almost a long um, strategic initiative process of getting different people involved in creating it we didn't want to come in because it's Max vision, yes, he could have just hired me, he and I could have sat down and we could have mapped out this full Baylor built program and, and what preparing champions for life would look like for everybody. But our desire was to get folks to buy into the process because they were a part of the process, not because we asked or mandated them to do that. And so we had coaches focus groups. So we sat and listened to coaches. What, what do you, what do you wanna see to get the most out of your young man or, or the young woman that's on your team? How do you, want us to help develop them as people. What are things we can do that will translate also to, to the field or the court? Um, but then also as they've graduated from your program, what are some of the things that they said they wish they would have had? And we did the same thing from, from student athletes. We sat down with a group of them. We had a, a, um, a small cohort that we, that we talked through and, and walked them through the process. What do you want? What are you missing? What have some of your former teammates said that they wish they would have gotten? And we use those experience mixed with my, my former experiences and experiences of others in our strategic initiative committee to build this program together from the ground up. So, so it'd be one that everybody could take pride in, that everybody can say, this is a part of what it means to be a Baylor Bear, what, what it means to truly be built by your experiences at Baylor. And because of that, now when we say we have, you know, 48 hours of mandatory programming for our student athletes. It's hard for our coaches to push back on it because they were a part of the process on the front end. Like, yeah, maybe in season or, you know, it may be a time when you're trying to get them to do something else, but we all committed that we were gonna make sure our student athletes were Baylor built by going through this, this, this process. And so we can easily remind them of that in those moments where they wanna monopolize as much time as they, as they, uh, as they can get. But then also it, it's, it helps them truly that we, we've seen yep. some of them talk about how they've seen the fruits of the work that we're doing show up uh, on the field of play. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. And, and, and I want, I want all, all those watching today to get an idea of what this Baylor built programming is. And, and, and to preface that I was a student athlete here. Uh, I had an incredible experience. Uh, I love Baylor with all my heart. I love what we stand for and the mission, but I can say with full confidence what we are doing now through Baylor Build is hands down more than I ever got as a student athlete. And my time was amazing. So I think about that. And, and for me in a fundraising role, I, I'm so passionate about what we do um, because I truly believe a student athlete that comes to Baylor doesn't gets a, an exponentially better experience than someone that goes down the road to um, to that burnt orange school or to, to A&M or to Texas Tech or OU, they, they're they not doing what we're doing and they can't do it with that Christian mission. And so I just, part of me wishes I could come back uh, and be an athlete again um, to get that experience. I mean, part of me wishes I could just be an athlete again, period. Uh, yeah, my body doesn't we hurt do. after to go run for a mile and, <laughs> and then I need to go ice yeah. my knees. But uh, I just, it, it makes me proud as a former student athlete, as a Baylor alum, knowing what you and your department and, and so many involved have, have begun to implement and accomplish through this. So let's let's dive into this. So, okay. so Baylor Built is a four-year uh, curriculum. So uh, freshmen will start and they'll work their way through it uh, through their senior year. And each year it builds upon what they learned uh, the year before. 
Um, and, and then there's five categories. So let, let's just jump into career development, category yeah. one. Talk me through uh, kind of what we do from a career development standpoint that, again, this is outside of what they get on campus across the Absolutely. street. This is what we're doing specifically for our athletes. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to take place of the Career Development Center on campus. In fact, members of the Career Development Center were a part of our strategic initiative group to help build this out. This is in addition to what they get through their classes and through some of the program, the great programming that happens on, on campus. You know, we don't get into the career fairs. We don't get into some, to some of those things. Like we push them to campus for that. Our thought is helping them figure out what God has called them to do, who, they, who God's called them to be, and how do we help them live that out while they're here? How do we help them along that, that process so that when they get ready to go to the next phase of their life, they're ready for it? And that could, from a career standpoint, that could be going on to play professional sports because we have great programs and some of them do that. Um, it could be going on to grad school. It could be going on to a job, an internship. Maybe they're going to take some time off. We really try to focus on how we can help them get ready for whatever that next phase is. So there's an education component. There's the basics, like your freshman year, resume, cover letters, things of that nature. Um, but, but then your, your, your sophomore year, we're, we're diving more into um, some more mentor type, pro career mentor type programming. Um, we're, we're learning from former letter winners. We're, we're figuring out what careers we, we actually want to, to uh, pursue. We're having networking events. Um, it, this year alone, we have 37 different corporate partners that we're partnering with to provide services and, and programs for our, our student athletes. We have over 25 hours of career development programming that our student athletes go to, to, to prepare them. What's next? Just this Friday alone for our spring sports, um, following our soccer game, we have a networking event where our, our seniors can get in the room because of, it, of COVID, it's gonna be virtual, but we have some ways to do some breakout rooms and all that, but we, we still wanna make sure they get the, the opportunity to talk to people about what their dreams and aspirations are. Can they build connections with people? Maybe they haven't had a chance to participate in some of the clubs on campus to build some of those, their network. Or can we create opportunities for them through our programming to do that? Um, so we've had people like a, uh, AT&T, Magnolia, uh, uh, Marathon Petroleum, um, BAL, one of our, our big, big supporters, um, the, the, law firm, the law firm BAL, they, they've done some great work with us. We have a number of, of partners who have helped us be able to provide programming for our students so that not only are they getting the education that they need from a career perspective, but they're also getting some experience to help prepare them for that transition. That's incredible. And, and, a, and a side rabbit trail plug, I think one of the things I love hearing you say is, is others are involved. And so um, getting our constituents and those that care about Baylor and our student athletes involved more than just philanthropy and what they're doing Absolutely. to help support Baylor Bill from the Bear Foundation, but even of their time, we long for that. We need that. Yes. Um, and, and so if, if there's anyone that you know or you're interested uh, on, on this uh, Zoom call today, uh, email Marcus and I, uh, get connected with us. We want to help connect you to make an impact uh, because that's just as valuable in yeah. building that networking. We, we, we actually have career coaches on our team. That's one of the commitments Mac made was to expand our staff so we can provide career coaching to all, each one of our student athletes that's specific to them. We meet with them as a part of their senior transition process. But we also have like interviewing workshops and mock interviews where it's, it's like a speed dating type of concept. Uh, where you're you're spending 10 minutes with each person. I can I can do that. Nick can do that. But the reality is we need people who are who are living it in the healthcare field and, and business and, and uh, communications and education and folks from all over. We need you to help us in that process. And so if there's ways you think you can get involved, as Nick said, we welcome it. And um, the more the merrier. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's jump into the next piece, uh, which yeah. is leadership development. Um, you know, I would say leadership such a, uh, a term that's used in a lot of ways, especially in our culture. Yeah. Um, I would say we're all leaders in some form or fashion. We're leading people in one direction or another, whether we quote, see ourselves as a leader or not, but take that deeper. What are we doing from a leadership development with our student athletes? Um, and, and what courses do we offer? Yeah. So, so in our 48 hour programming, leadership is the one area that's optional. All the rest of them are, are mandatory, um, but leadership, we, we've, we've carved it out in a way that we feel like we still can get 
a great number of our student athletes to go through our programs. We have some of the staples like our student athlete advisory council. So again, some people may not be able to be a part of a club on campus. We basically have a student organization where people can get some leadership experience. Um, we've established uh, a new group called the Huddle Council. Maybe we can talk about a little bit later potentially, but that's another opportunity for people to get some leadership experience. Um, but in addition to that, we have our leadership retreat. It's open to any of our student athletes. We have some guest speakers. So if you, anybody out there thinks you, you want to come and speak to our student athletes about leadership, there's another opportunity to do so. But in our retreat, it's, it's just the point you made, Nick, that any and everybody can and does lead. And we want you, each one of our student athletes who go through the program to understand how they can show up as a leader, what that looks like for them in their own journey. What are their values? What, what are, what are um, some of the things that they are equipped with that provide value to their team, to their friends, to our community? And how do we help them really um, connect with those in a way that allows them to show up in spaces in their true and authentic self? Because we feel like that's the foundational piece. If you can realize that you contribute, whether you play a snap or not, you can play a role in, on, your, on your team. It, maybe you're a type of person who brings people together and you can use that in athletics or you can use that in the community of bringing people together for a cause. How, how do we help them really realize how they're wired and how that can show up in spaces? And, and then we have a leadership institute that's more specific to people who have been identified as an influencer on their team. One of the one of the best things that that uh, <laughs> that that I get a chance to be a part of is an institute. So last fall, listen, we had uh, Yasi Presley, Terrell Bernard, Jalen Petrie, R.J. Sneed, uh, Chanel Bramshire. Um, going through, there's a few others that I can name off, but those are people that I, I think most people, if you follow our sports, you know those are our volleyball and football student athletes. J.T. Woods was in that group as well. Before the people have seen them in, in the headlines, if you will, like they were doing the leadership work behind the scenes. They were trying to figure out how do I step up when my time is called? How do, how do I make sure that I can hold my teammates accountable? But before I can do that, I have to hold myself accountable. How do I lead with love? This year we talked about leading with love and how you can, how you can do that. And sometimes love seems like it's this soft skill, but in reality, if you love somebody, you'll hold them accountable. If you love somebody, you'll stand up for, for them. If you love someone, you will be patient, you'll be kind. Like we did all those things behind the scenes so that when you all see them on the field, they've already done the work. They're just, they're just living through some of the scenarios that we talked Good. about beforehand. So I remember Terrell before he was a starter sitting and talking about, man, Clay is awesome, man. I just don't know how to lead because he's he's the he's the our leader on the defense. And we talked about how he could win his teammates, how he could have. Clay's back as a follower and, and, and lead as a follower and what that would look like. And when your time comes, it won't be, it, it won't be an um, abnormal for your teammates to see you in a leadership role. They would have already seen you do that as a follower. Um, so it's things like that, that make it really exciting. And, and it's, it's wonderful to see our, our work, you know, play out in ways that people will never know. People won't, you know, understand that they're, they're doing those things behind the scene, but that's, those things mean something to us, you know, for this year, for people to walk away and talk about how they realized the impact they could have on the team, how they can influence in every situation. Like that's, that's lifelong skill building that we believe will go on to make our world a better place. Uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm getting chills just hearing you talk. So I, I love the passion. Um, can I sign up for that? Is that something you I can, can sign up for, even you though can. I'm not an athlete anymore? <laughs> you can. Come on. We'll make, a, we'll make a spot for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. We'll talk about the third pillar, uh, personal skills. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and what does that really mean? Uh, break that down for me. Yeah. Personal skills is, are some of the life skills, the things that you often won't get in your actual classroom. I imagine most people go through life and may never have a conversation about, um, maybe you have conversations about budgeting and saving, some people. Maybe never had a conversation about credit though. Like credit, credit scores, credit reports. How do you read them? How do you understand them? What are my, like, what are my options in terms of, of uh, pulling my reports, things like that? Uh, how often should I be pulling them? Where do I get them? How do I file a complaint about something if something is, is inaccurate. 
we want to make sure our young people have those skills. Those are the skills that are going to impact them for life. You know, maybe you, you're going to, you're in Waco right now, but you're planning to go and, and live in Houston when you're done. And you think you're going to get a high, high rise loft downtown Houston, but you hadn't really thought about the cost of living. So we have a cost of living program that we take all of our juniors through. So they understand where they're going to Austin, they're staying in Waco, or they're going to Dallas, you name it, going to live in New York because you want to go into finance. That's great. Do you understand what that means in a real practical, mm -hmm. like actually line item by line item? You think you're going to get a new car as a new volleyball professional athlete? Maybe not, because maybe in Russia, it doesn't work that way. So we, 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 we walk through those pieces before it's time, like the same way in the sport, they get practice reps. We do it beforehand, so when they get there, they're ready for it. And then our second year, we're talking about uh, taxes, we're talking about insurance, retirement, some of those life skill things. That we I tell them all the time. When I got my first job, I got a stack of papers this thick, and they told me to pick all of these, all of these benefits, and I had no clue. I had mom and dad in my house, and and they both had wonderful jobs. We never talked about picking benefits. I just knew my insurance was my mom gave me an insurance card, and I went to the doctor when she told me to. I don't want our young people to walk away from here without having those fundamental skills, or at least knowing what questions to ask, to understand what a PPO is. I'm still trying to figure it out, quite frankly, but I want them not to be my age and trying to figure out a PPO. Uh, so so that, those are the types of things that we're doing. We're doing financial literacy. We have 13 different financial literacy workshops that we've, we've done over the course of the year. In our personal skills, we also have a mentor program where we partner with letter winners, former letter winners, this year, we have 32 different mentor pairs. The idea is helping them walk through life. Letter winners who've been on this campus and have done this Baylor and Waco life, come back and help the next generation through. It's, uh, it's amazing to see. And then we also have a class that our freshmen go through that teaches some of the fundamentals of all of our pillars over the course of, a fall, over the, course of the fall or spring semester to make sure for our freshmen that their development is embedded in their actual coursework. So that's really, you know, kind of high level what we're doing from a personal skill standpoint. It's it's making sure that those tangible life skills are actually taught, regardless of what your major is, regardless of you know what your family background is, things of that nature. I love that, and, and I think the thing I loved is the, what you said is we're trying to address it before they get to that point. You know, and I, and I think I think so often in life. It, we think mentoring and different things. Well, once I hit it, then I'll, I'll learn about it, but then you're behind the eight ball, you're behind you're the behind curve. Them. And so yeah. trying to get in front of it, I think that's, I think that's brilliant and, and intuitive. You just mentioned degrees. And, and so I want to take a, a little rabbit trail, talk about, um, you know, I think most schools and most athletes, people think that, you know, it, it's about general studies and what's the easiest degree we can get. Um, real quick, highlight how many degrees do we have amongst our student athletes and or our football program, if you could, if, if you know some of those stats about the diversity of our student athletes and what they're pursuing because they understand sports ends one day. Yeah. And so what do you want to do uh, with your life? Yeah, that's 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 another foundational piece. It's kind of it's a, it's it's in the academic achievement bucket, but it's something that ties closely with character development. How can you prepare somebody from a career side if from an academic side we aren't aligned in that? So our academic coaches do a great job of walking our student athletes through identifying a major that most aligns with what you want to do. And, and so that means we've got to be flexible in how we do that. We don't get into the clustering of majors and all that. Yeah, we have some that are higher than others. I think our top four majors are um, health kinesiology and leisure studies, so HKLS. Um, business or pre-business is probably the largest one, but within business, you if you start breaking out marketing and management and accounting and, and some of those pieces, that fills up our top 10 pretty quick. We have communications as a top four uh, and our health science studies. So you think about just those four alone, uh, health, and, health and kinesiology, business, communications, and health sciences. That's a pretty wide range. Quite frankly, in other places I've been, you don't have that wide of a range. I think we're over um, 30 different majors on our football team, which is unheard of. Unheard of. That's unbelievable. That's, um, that's just, you know, so we're going to give our young people a shot. 
to go after the dream. You think you want to be an engineer? Great. Let's go for it. There is a price that you have to pay to be an engineer. But if that's what you think you want to do, fantastic. We have some of our young people who are doing that. Uh, that you want to go on the, to, you want to be pre-med, you want to own your own business and entrepreneurship, you want to do some great, let's build a program that helps you do that from an academic side. And what's been, what's been most, um, you know, most satisfying for me, I'm, I'm a track guy. And so we train all year long to get like a hundredth of a second faster. Like literally pour ourselves into just getting a little bit better. And we've really implemented that same concept into uh, our, our academic achievement. We want people to strive for their personal best. If you're a, four, if you're a 3.8 student, give us 3.8, don't give us 3.6. We think that translates in life. Like we don't, we don't want you taking shortcuts and trying to, trying to, to, um, to figure out the easy way there. If you're a 2.2, give us 2.2, don't give us 2.0. And so we really, we really harp on personal best. That's a big thing for us. Uh, this last year alone, we had 55% of our student athletes get, have their personal best this past, wow. um, this past school year. Um, and that was, you know, since we've been here, record numbers, part of that was the transition to, uh, to, to online and some of those things that, that kind of helped us. Usually we're around 35%, but think about that. One out of every student athletes per year, not including your freshmen, so that's no, you don't get an easy check because this is your first semester. You had to have been here and establish a, a, a great point average. Got usually get their personal best, one out of three. And to wow. me, establish that mindset that I'm going to give my best in everything that I do, even though I may not really want to do academics. I, I may really want to just do my sport, but I'm going to give my best nonetheless. Uh, I think that that speaks volumes. We have 55 of our student athletes have a 4.0, uh, 110 of our, um, let's see, let me think here, like 110 of our, our students um, had their 4.0 in the spring. Um, so 55 in the fall, 110 in the spring. We, we've, we've had some great success academically. 3.4 GPA um, over this last school year. Cumulative GPA was 3.34. I mean, our, our young people, people are seeing them being top 10 ranked uh, on the field. They're not really seeing that in the classroom, they're dominating. They're rising to the challenge and they said, okay, I'm going to attempt, give my all to be the best I can be in everything that I do. And that's, that is a big piece of what makes me proud to be a part of the Baylor family. I love it. I love the personal best. You know, I, I think in our world, we, we think about getting our 40 time personal best or, you know, what's my personal best in squatting or bench press or in the weight room. But yeah. I think even for all of us watching and even me again, hearing this, I want to wake up and give my personal best. So even as I look at my goals and what I can accomplish, like how can I be my best? So I, I think that's unbelievable. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for letting us take that scenic route uh, there. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it actually translates to both sides. The personal best is a part of who we are. Like I got, we say the same thing. If I'm going to be a father, I can't pick and choose when I want to be my, I can't, mm. I don't. I shouldn't, let me say it this way. I shouldn't pick and choose when I'm going to be my best. Like I, I'm going to go home to my kids and I want to be the personal, the, the best father I can be for my wife. I want to be the best husband I can be in my job. I want to be the, the best that I, that I can be in what I do. I may not be as good as you, Nick, but if I can be my best and that's, and, and we think that that's, that translates, that translates to the community side. Like go give your best in the community. Maybe it's 10 hours for you. Maybe it's only two for me. But can I go give my best? Can I can I give my best in the career side of things, in my leadership? Can I, can I give my best at all that that I do? And that's something that we're trying to make sure our student athletes understand regardless. They can't pick and choose. If you want to be great, you don't pick and choose where you're going to be great. You get you you if you are going to be great, you have to be great in all, all things that you sign up for. Gosh. I love it. If you're not like wanting to jump out of your chair right now, I don't think you have a heartbeat. So <laughs> I like, I'm ready to go punch a wall, run down the hall, like scream, yell, let's go. Like this is, this is what it's about. Uh, and this is why we do what we do every day. And and this is why those watching and, and those that support us with their time and philanthropy, this is what they're supporting. And so I, I love it. Um, real quick, let, we've got two more little buckets in our, in our Baylor. Okay. Book. We have social responsibility. What does that mean? Touch on that. Yeah, social responsibility is about being a good human being, like understanding what that means, how, how, understanding the how you show up in relationships. So we have a real relationship talk that we do is customized for us here at Baylor 
to talk about um, how we're showing up in relationships with others. How do we establish boundaries? How do we acknowledge boundaries? How do we have conversations about what we desire in relationships, how we desire to be, a, to be treated? How do we communicate with somebody when we aren't treated the way that we, you know, that we desire to be? I think these are life skills that, again, I don't know that many people talk about. You know, it's, um, and we want to make sure that our young people get that. We talk about understanding diversity and understanding um, equality and what that means. How, how, do we, how do we respect, how do we treat one another with dignity and respect? How do we do that in a tangible way? We, we created a, a huddle council um, that it will be planning out student athlete huddles, basically for student athletes to come and talk about some of the challenges they're facing uh, as it relates to, to uh, any topic, really. There's some, there's some of the, the desire to talk about racial equity. There's desire to talk about just diversity of thought, diversity of experiences. There's a lot there that, that, we, can, that we can go down. Uh, we, we have also the space there to talk about um, like health and wellness drug and alcohol education and how that how that works. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to challenge our young people to be good human beings. I love it, I love it. Nick, I just got an alert that I need to plug my, my computer in. I forgot to do that, give me one second. Go plug it in. I don't, I don't wanna no, be one, this is This is real life, guys. We're not <laughs> avoiding real life. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Are we doing? our personal best every day, we absolutely are. Um, and, and so in Marcus, and I think this social piece, uh, I think one of the things I really like about it is it, is it seems like something you're having in face-to-face -face conversations outside of COVID. It's probably a lot over Zoom now. And, and yeah. I know we've had a, even had a question in here of, of how, how COVID has adjusted what we do. I'm, I'm assuming we just do it a lot in this form, uh, just like we're doing today. Um, but on that, uh, the thing I love is, is I think our generation and, and the generation behind us that, that we're getting to, to steward really well for four years right now at, at Baylor, it's easy to do things over digital platforms from a social media or text instead of let's get in the room and talk. Yeah. Um, and, and I think what you just mentioned on all these social uh, deals and what it means to be a good person, you're talking about it, you're having conversation. And, and I love hearing that because I think that's valuable. And I think that's an art that is being lost in today's society. So yeah, it's, a, it's one thing for us to have a Title IX training where somebody just stands up and talks to you for an hour. It's another thing to actually have a conversation, to have, yeah. have, have talk about experiences, talk about ways, you know, kind of maybe how you've been raised and some of the relationships you've had and some of those things. Like if, if we can get our young people to learn how to have um, quality dialogue, maybe even to have a difference of opinion, but to voice those in a way that is respectful of one another and create spaces for them to do that. Um, that, that those are the young people, those are the people that my kids are gonna look up to. Yeah. They're gonna be the ones that are running the country when my, when my two year old becomes 20. And we wanna make, I wanna make sure that they're ready and equipped to do that. And I think they're hungry for it. And I'm, I'm excited to be at a place that actually provides an opportunity to do that. I love it, I love it. We'll touch on touch on the last bucket of, yeah. of community engagement. Uh, how are how are we actually living that out, and what are we doing? And 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 again, I, I touch on my experience. And and while it was amazing, we didn't have a lot of uh, engagement in our community. I did I did a lot of my stuff through my church, but there wasn't an organized effort from our from our athletic department um, yeah. consistently. And so this is one of the pieces I'm actually really excited about. Yeah, we, we want We felt like the community engagement piece should be a part of who we are. It's a part of our Christian mission. We feel um, it's part of our, our just mission in general here at Baylor. As a part of our 48 hours, four hours of those per year are committed to community engagement. That it is our expectation that there will not be a student athlete who graduates from here who has not done 16 hours of community engagement. And that's not like signing autographs. That's a part of the. That's part of the the opportunity that you have as being a student athlete. This is actually going and engaging in the Waco community. Uh, maybe it's the regional community or maybe even some of the, some things abroad. So um, it's right now we're working with 48 different organizations across um, the, the central Texas area. Um, last year, prior to COVID, we had about uh, a little over 1800 hours. The year prior, we had 3,500 hours worth of of community engagement that our student athletes have committed to serving the people that that we do life with here and and 
we focus on healthy lifestyles. Uh, we focus on literacy, poverty, and human rights. Those are the four areas that we want to to kind of funnel our attention. There's so many different ways that you could you could do this, and we just feel like that's a part of the mission. It, it aligns with um, things that, as a university, we've put out. And so that's what's been the focus. And uh, last year, pre-COVID, 73% of our student athletes had done their community engagement hour. Like that, I mean, I, you want to get to 100, but if you're saying before March 10th, March, it's what, two months. Yeah, that's 70, 73 uh, percent of them did it throughout that school year. Then I, I'm okay with that. I think we would have got win. here, but that's a, yeah. that's a win for us. And so we're we're partnering with you know seven different local elementary schools. We're involved with we. Uh, Shepherd's Heart and some of the other organizations here in town. Again, 48 different ones we're, we're connected to in some capacity. I love it. I, I love that we're using our platform uh, and these athletes are understanding they have a platform and, yeah. and they can use it to make a difference. And, and, and as we touched on all five of these buckets, underguarding all of it is the spiritual growth piece. And yeah. so talk about how that affects what we do. And, and I know we've even in the last 12 months rolled out some new uh, spiritual growth opportunities. Yes. This is what, this is our competitive advantage, in my opinion, the, the Christian mission, who we are uh, as a university um, to faithfully steward the authentic pursuit of, of competitive excellence through Christ. That's our, that's who we are as Baylor athletics. So how does that fit into all this? So as a part of that strategic initiative process, we were constantly thinking about how, is spiritual growth embedded in it. And it's not just its own thing. Yeah, we'll have some programs that are specific to it, but how can it be a part of this? So you, you I think I said it, I usually say it, uh, when we think about career, we wanna think about like a calling that comes along with that. So that shapes how we do our curriculum. It's not just what job do you want? Like, what do you, what do you feel like you're being called to do? There's some reflective pieces that we do. There's encouragement of prayer. There's encouragement of meditation on it. There's there's that that's embedded into it. Uh, in leadership, we talk about, I mentioned followership because we think there's leadership in that. Well, the beauty is here, we start with an image of, uh, of Jesus mm -hmm. washing wow. as our introductory image to our conversation. We, we talk about in our Leadership Institute, we were talking about love and what, well, what are some examples of that? Here are some some biblical examples of that. Here are some examples of everyday life. Like we're, we're embedding that in all that we're doing so that it, again, it doesn't feel like it's just something separate. And that, that, that's a part of what makes us special. And uh, other people, even if you tried, you can't do it. You, you, mm -hmm. There aren't many schools that can do that. And so we, we really, you know, we talk about from a relationship standpoint, what does, what does the word say about how we are, are interacting in relationships? And, um, Think that our student athletes find great value, and the reality is, that not all of our student athletes are Christian. Not, all, not every student at Baylor is a Christian, but we feel like we also are introducing them to the gospel as we go through yeah. the work that we're doing. And so, um, lives have been changed by it. We, you mentioned the fact that we've we instituted some new programs. I, I one of my visions um, when I think about my faith is like getting to heaven, and all of us regardless of race, color, creed, like regardless of where you grew up in the country, being able to worship together. I think that's gonna be a beautiful sight. Mm -hmm. Like I, there won't be a, a church for, dom, for, for certain dom, denominations, I don't think, or there won't be like racial divides. I hope, I hope we'll all be able to be together. And we went through this journey of, well, what, why do we have to wait? Mm -hmm. What are we creating that here now? Like, could we create an opportunity for that for our student athletes to have an experience where it didn't matter if you're Methodist or Baptist or whatever, Catholic, whatever, doesn't matter. Like we're here to worship our Lord and Savior together. So we implemented this new program called Be Unfiltered. It's the opportunity, no matter where you are on your faith journey, maybe you've been going since you were uh, a kin, you know, since you were out of the womb, maybe you've never gone. Actually, since you came to Baylor, this is the first time you've ever been experienced or been exposed to Christ. Like, what if we created an opportunity where they, as a young person, you felt really comfortable? Because these are people that you eat lunch with all the time in the bank. These are people you go battle with on the field. What if we just got together and worshiped together and we had students tell their testimony and, and had um, relatable speakers come and talk about their experiences, maybe their former athlete, maybe their former coach, and, and that we have this just unfiltered experience where we break into small groups and have conversations about how the message 
related to you and all of that. And it doesn't matter what sport, it doesn't matter your, your skin color, it doesn't matter denomination. Like we're just in this together. We did one just, um, we did one just what, two weeks ago, I think it was. Yep. And we were worried about, the, it was a cold, I don't know if you remember, it was maybe a Monday night, two weeks ago, it was really cold, 40 degrees. And we were planning to do it outside at the softball stadium. But we, we, we wanted to do it in person. So we just feel like our young people, our world needs it right now. Yeah. And um, we fought through some of the challenges, did it in the indoor. We set it up for a hundred people thinking maybe 30, 40 or show. I just remember seeing the young people, uh, actually gives me chills thinking about that. I just remember seeing our young people from all sports pour in. We had like 85 or so student athletes who showed up from different sports to just worship together, right? And, and we had like uh, about 15 to 20 staff. So about a, almost every chair was filled to just worship together. It didn't really matter any of the other stuff. We were socially distanced. You can look online, you can see the pictures. We kept, everybody had on the mask. <laughs> like all of that was weird, but clearly our young people needed it. And we want to be able to provide that for them. We also have an I discipleship program that's an eight week leadership program to help our young people learn how to disciple others, how to start a small mm. group, how to get your team together and, and, and start a Bible study. Uh, and then we have our mission trips. I think last year we had 64 student athletes participate in mission trips globally. That's to, um, that's, we, we got Africa, we've done Guatemala, we've done Mexico. You know, we, we do a number of things on Puerto Rico in the past, Brazil in the past. We like to provide our student athletes with opportunities to go and spread the good news other places. Use the power of sport to open up doors to make that happen. So uh, that's our spiritual growth piece from a programmatic component, but then also how it's embedded in, in everything that we're doing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I know our time is coming close and I want to get Talking two too questions. Much. Well, <laughs> I'm, let, I'm, I'm teeing you up. This is great. I love okay. the passion. Uh, and, and I think that's what makes this so special is your passion about it. And when you're passionate about something, you do it with excellence. And so you know, we, we've got a few questions on, on what it looks like um, uh, around post-grad of students coming back. I know we've only been doing this program for a little over a year, 18 months now. Um, what successes have we seen and do we offer opportunities for former athletes to come back, whether it's job related or uh, staying engaged? Like how are we, really our resources are, are, are here for the student athletes in our care today but are we doing anything outside once they leave our doors? Yeah, our desire is to get to the point where we can continue to provide some of the same types of programs in conjunction with our B Association to, to provide opportunities for our former, former student athletes. Yep. Right now, there's no formal um, programming dedicated to that. Right now, they would reach out to us if they've been here and they, over the last four years, they have relationships with us, they probably will reach out um, and then through the B Association, reach out to Walter. Maybe folks have asked, hey, can we? Can you help us navigating career? I need some help with resume. I'm kind of 10 years out. I haven't touched a resume in a while. We're doing some of those things, but actual programming for them, similar to this, we're, we aren't there yet, but it's on the horizon. We've got some, some things we got to do to get there in terms of staff, okay. some of the other stuff to get to that point. But because um, I mean, right now we're, we're doing 120 programs a year just off of character formation alone. So we're, we're, we're spread, we're spread pretty thin, but yeah. knowing that, that we want to get there. But, yep. but I think the other piece of what you're saying is I just got a note card in the mail from a volleyball student athlete who graduated this past year, got accepted into grad school and was writing back and talking about um, things that she heard and experienced while she was here, that she applied in her interview that she just got married maybe two months ago, that she's applied in her marriage, helped her have an open conversation with her husband about, about um, her, her, her desires within relationship and boundaries and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm reading it. My wife's asking me what's wrong because I'm in tears because that's what we do it for. Wow. Mm. We do it for, for that, for those moments. Um, because we, again, we're not in the spotlight. We're the behind the scenes folks. <laughs> Nobody needs to even know or care that, that we're doing this, you know, but but we know that it matters and is making a difference in the lives of our young people. And um, so we, we do have those experiences where people come back, they want to work in our office, they want to work within athletics and things like that. And we try to help them provide those, we try to provide those opportunities as well. Love it, love it. Final question, I know, I know we're coming up on time and I think it's the most important question and Trent and others have, have asked uh, this is, is uh, now that they have this knowledge uh, and we're and, and we're going to continue to push this program out and, 
and doing things like today help make this and, and Baylor built and what we're doing off the field more public. Um, but knowledge is power. And so those watching know what we're doing and now they want to act upon it. So how do we, uh, how did these folks get involved? Um, you know, following today's event, there's going to be an email that goes out with, with a chance to give financially. Uh, all these things cost money. I'm the fundraiser. That's where my mind goes. And so um, I, I want everyone to be a part of it philanthropically. Um, being a part of it with your time, uh, time is money in a lot of a lot of instances. And so we need people, there's these networking nights and, and different things. And so if you're interested of giving of your time, you can email Marcus and I, uh, we can send you a, a little survey to, to see how you uh, would want to be involved in different areas and, and get you on a running list. And so our emails are simple, nick underscore Florence at Baylor.edu, uh, Marcus underscore Sedberry at Baylor.edu. But Marcus, I want to give you one more pitch. Why should someone get involved with their time and their philanthropy? Um, what does that mean to you? Yeah, to me, if you love Baylor, if you love Baylor athletics, if when you're in the stands, you're, you're looking at our young people and you're, you're thinking about how they're doing what they're doing, like how they're thriving in the way that they are. As you look at them, I, I, I challenge everybody to think about the person. Mm -hmm like the person that is pouring their heart and soul in that sometimes doesn't like they may not have the opportunity to take advantage of the other or to, to really look at the other aspects of who they are and what they're about. Like if you care about their identity, you care about how they're going to show up in the world when they graduate from here, you care about how they're going to represent Baylor and the, their conversations uh, in their leadership roles on their job, how they're going to show up in whatever communities they're in. Like if you if you care about our young student athletes in that way, then pouring your time, your treasure, your energy, your prayers even into this is is how you make a difference. All these things do cost money. We can't, you know, when, we, when COVID's done, you know, we 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 want to provide these networking events in person. We want them to be Baylor class, like first class. Take some resources to do that. The networking event has to have people. Maybe you have a community, maybe you have a, a, a foundation that you're connected to that you feel like our young people could come and pour their heart and yeah. reach out to us. Let us know we want to come and serve. But if you really care about them as people beyond the, the scoreboard and you want to be a part of that, preparing champions for life is the opportunity to do that. And I, I promise you, uh, as you have heard, like we're going to make sure it's worth it. We'll make sure your time is worth it. I guarantee your cup will be filled when you walk away. If it's your, your treasure, like I guarantee you that we will maximize whatever you give to make sure that our young people get every ounce of it. Um, and, and, and if it's a matter of coming to support, being a part of it, um, we'll make sure that we'll do our personal best to give our best for our students and give their best to the world. I got nothing else to add to that. Like, and. Mic drop, unbelievable. Marcus, um, it's an honor to work alongside you. It's an honor uh, to be involved with Baylor and, and have you uh, a part of our team, even though you're a Cornhusker um, with a degree in hand, but unbelievable. I've got nothing else to add. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all watching. I know Adrian has, has a few more announcements, but uh, can't say Thank enough, you. Marcus. Unbelievable. Thank you. It's a joy to represent Baylor. It um, means the world to me. Thank you. Wow, on behalf of Baylor alumni in Baylor engagement, I wanna thank both of you. Marcus Sedberry, Nick Florence, thank you so much, it's been a great event. And something I didn't mention earlier is Nick, you were the named Big 12 All Academic All-American, right? That's a great honor. And also first team, let's see, what was that first team, All-American, All-Academic um, all and Big 12 Scholar Athlete of the Year. And as you said, <clears throat> when you were here, the Baylor Built program wasn't in session and working, but Baylor was already investing in you. And I wanna thank you, Nick, for taking your personal best and reinvesting it back into Baylor. What a great person you are to help build Baylor Built with what you do. <clears throat> and I think of you, Marcus, I think of a quote I've heard many times, and I didn't know the origin of the quote, but it's from Billy Graham. And when I was at Baylor in the 90s, three of his grandchildren chose Baylor and were on campus. But what he said 
was a coach in one year could impact more people than the average person impacts in their entire life. And so Marcus, I, I see you in the program and your coaches like a life coach impacting people so deeply. And the way like you're even looking as Samuel Palmer Brooks said, we're, we're preparing them for the life hereafter that we can, like you said, stand together, worship one God together and with that Christian mission. So thank both, I thank both of you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so envisioned, I'm like you, Nick, like I think I need to go do some push-ups and um, run a hundred yard dash <laughs> more equipped and I wanna reach out and be my best for other people. So in wrapping up, I wanna say we have some other fantastic events coming up virtually and please write this down. I want to make sure you know about it and that you could attend virtually on Veterans Day, Wednesday, November 11th, there's a special lunch with the legends, event honoring Jack Loomis and John Kane, two Baylor letter winners and Medal of Honor recipients. You should be getting an email invite to this if you haven't already. We'd love to have you attend virtually. And on November 17th, we'll have a business school update with Dean Terry Manus. You won't want to miss that. There's always so many amazing things happening in our business school. We have over 4,000 students in the business school. It's a beautiful complex, around 17 majors. These kids and students are doing a fantastic job changing the world. <clears throat> so before we sign off, just like um, Nick mentioned, you will be getting an email after this event, inviting you to invest in the Baylor Built program. I wanna tell you every bit that we give matters. Even if it's a small amount, please give. Everything you give helps invest a better life into our student athletes. And that is what we want. Baylor is the best of the best and we wanna continue supporting the best of the best. And also as Baylor alumni, I wanna invite you to engage with us and consider volunteering with the Baylor alumni. You can email baylorlumni at baylor.edu and let us know and we'll help you get connected and engaged. So again, I wanna thank all of you for attending and I hope you have a fantastic day.